Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, September 10th, 2023. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Dotter 5. And as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, it's me, the Wombat, back Yo. from COVID. Cool. It welcome tried back. to take me down, but it couldn't take me down. <laughs> yeah, we, I don't know if the audience knows or not, but we missed the last couple of weeks because yeah. I was that sick. Take that, God. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. Mm. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, God, holy books, and superstition. And if you think you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over 1,000 of us, nearly 1,100 now. Wow. We're at the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. I'm going to tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? We're going to talk about credibility and a couple of stories today. But I want to say, you know, while I get my training wheels underneath myself, because I'm still having some cough, cough spells, uh, I am glad to have this session with you again, because I remember listeners of the show will re- remember way back when years ago, it would just be me and Larry in a studio uh, dishing back and forth, sweating <laughs> with the sound <laughs> of an air conditioner in the background. Yeah, so you had to turn it off when we were talking. We had to turn it, it off we, during the breaks. Yeah, we would hope someone would call in so we can mute ourselves and turn on and blast that air conditioning for a while. Yeah. And then we'd have to play music and then hopefully get back in. But those were the good times. Those were the good times. Anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. So we we're talking about credibility today. Uh, the reason why I want to talk about credibility is it's important for us to know how to get credible information, right? And so we need to have credible sources, or we need to be able to measure the credible, the credibility of the different sources that we have, because we don't yeah. want to work off of false information. Right. What that, what is what use is the information if we can't trust it? I mean, exactly. it's just going to lead us away from the truth and away from reality. Yeah, a smart man once said that I care both about things being true and knowing when things are false, right? So like I Mm -hmm. need to be able to pull out my falsehoods from my truth. And I tend to rely more on credible sources because they tend to tell me more true things. But even with the most credible source, I still need to have a level of skepticism that's healthy for me to still parse truths from false. And no time more important than uh, maybe I would say like my, my experience with COVID. Because I got, con- I had COVID like two and a weeks ago, approximately. Um, I went to a grocery store. I imagine I picked it up then just for a quick in and out, just picked up one thing, walked out. And then for the rest of the day, I felt a little like I thought I had like a bit of a stomach bug because I ate something mm-hmm. that had some dairy in it. Right. And I'm thinking, mm-hmm. oh, it's, it'll go away in 24 hours. The next day still felt, you know, irritable, still felt a little weak, but I checked myself, no fever. And I had been vaccinated, so I thought, I'm good. This is probably just a weird kick. Went to work the next day, developed like a really bad sore throat. And I'm thinking to myself, I test it. I'm going to test myself this afternoon. I'm going to test myself for lunch this afternoon. Um, by the time I went back home, I was already so fatigued and so disoriented. I felt like I got off of a, a Ferris wheel ride or like one of those spinning rides at an amusement park. Mm-hmm. And now I'm beginning to like tie all these symptoms together. I do the COVID test this time, actually listening to the instructions. Cause before I was just <laughs> doing it, it's like, Oh, you stick it in your nose and you, you dab it in. Oh, yeah. it's negative. I'm good to go to work. This time uh-huh. I watched the video. It's like, Hey, you got to stick it in there and you got to mm-hmm. swirl for like 15 I'm minutes. Both nostrils. Yeah, you both get as nostrils. Much as you can. It's the grossest thing. It's the grossest thing. Yeah. You're like, Oh, I don't want to put that back in my body. So, but you do it anyway. Yeah. You put it in there and you wait. And it was a hard, 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 uh, positive test for COVID. And I was thinking, thankfully, I had a, 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 a good credible test. I had a good credible video to confirm my my status. And I had a good procedure for work to let my, co- uh, my employees know, let my boss know. And from that point onwards, I was at home self-isolating because I knew that that was a credible way to avoid infecting more people. Sure. And w- lo and behold, there are other people in town there's like a wave of COVID going through our our city. And, and I don't think it's just us. I think it's just another wave of COVID going on in general. But um, uh, through the steps that I followed, 
and uh, the the self care that I did at home and and managing myself and getting more face masks and stuff like that, I'm in a much better place now. I feel like I use reasonable means to get myself back into a healthier state again. And I feel so much better now that I'm in that healthy state. I didn't rely on crystals. I didn't pray. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like, you know, consult my psychic. You didn't I just draw did. a pentagram on the floor. No, but <laughs> I candles did. down. <laughs> <laughs> but I did reach out to like my sister who's a Muslim and she says, you should get some turmeric tea. She didn't say she's like, of course I'll think about you and I'll pray for you, but you should get some turmeric tea, uh, get some rubitussin, get some acetaminophen and like just, literally just keep resting. That's just treat the symptoms in rest. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I love, I love that. She's always science minded when she talks to me and like, these are credible points of information. My mom told me more or less the same thing. I looked up online, figured out what to do, but like the whole idea is I got credible information. I felt good and I got better, but here's the problem, Larry, not everything, not everything is as credible as that because there are of course, uncredible sources. I found how do you cure your COVID? Um, you could take like these weird um, holistic medicines. I don't know if you heard about the the garlic cure. Like you uh, you like oh. boil garlic and you drink the runoff and you like it by like one tenth. Is garlic water? Ugh. Yeah, you add some peroxide to it too, and it's supposed to, it's supposed to cure COVID from there. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. Like I found some really crazy cures. Like over the last two years, a lot of crazy things have come out. But they, yeah. but the most important thing for me is to get vaccinated. I, I'm sure mm -hmm. you got vaccinated too. I go to the gym after yep. I recover, after I've tested negative with COVID, and I'm there. And there's a physical trainer who ends, who I, who's not my personal one, who saw me working out, and he's like, "Hey, Ty, I haven't seen you in a long time." I'm like, "Yeah, it's good to see you too." And he's like, "Well, where have you been?" I was like, "I had COVID." He's like, "Oh man, almost everyone who teaches classes in this gym also got COVID." Like this lady, that lady, this person. So like, basically we have no classes this whole week. It's crazy. I'm so glad everyone's healthy. I mean, I didn't get vaccinated, but I'm glad everything's healthy. Let me look at your workout and like tell you which muscles to work. At. I'm like, I hear what you're saying, but you kind of snuck in the, I didn't get vaccinated level two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my thing is the credibility started to hit, hit because he would tell me you got to work your hip abductor by doing X, Y, Z. And if you're trying to work at your calves, you got to explode. It's like, you're telling me all right information. The message is true, but the credibility of the messenger is what I'm now questioning. And it's so much that it's distracting me from listening to the 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 truth of the message itself. Like, why package something with really really terrible gift wrap? Like, just just get vaccinated or don't tell people you didn't get vaccinated as your way towards telling them some scientific advice, right? And the whole thing I'm going to use to put this together is, if I go to any dentist, general practitioner, um or generally any hospital here in the in this in the city that I'm in. I don't know what it'll be like in Nashville, but I'll go to any of those um local clinics and there will be more than likely placard on the wall some verse from the Bible. Uh or a picture of Jesus on a cross or a picture of Jesus baptizing or being baptized by John the Baptist or a giant cross on the wall. And I think to myself, you know, I come to these places for credible information, credible help to take care of myself in a, what I hope to be a scientific basis, something that's grounded in some sort of testable reality that is objective and true. Yet it is compounded with this, with this gift wrap of, you know, supernatural beliefs or superstition or some sort of assumption on who's the chosen people in the world or what Jesus looked like, even though he's from Jerusalem and he looks like a chiseled, uh um brad pitt or <laughs> some blonde guy i'm like hey uh, st uh stories aside i feel like why do i why do i why do i live in a world where the credibility of people can't be automatically checked or questioned or 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 you know confronted in a way that makes them realize, hey, if I'm trying to be the science guy or the health guy or your doctor, I can't also be representing these weird holistic or supernatural spiritual messages. messages. Yeah. Yeah. It affects the credibility of the message that you say. Even if what you mm -hmm. say is true, it affects, in my opinion, the overall practice. I feel like yeah. why risk that at all? Larry, yeah, why do you makes, think that case? makes me feel like are they actually treating my tooth or are they praying that a demon will leave my body? You know, yeah. That type yeah. of thing. 
I mean, that used to be the way to do it. Like it used to be where if someone was sick, they'd bring over the priest first, right? Mm -hmm. And throw some water on them, do an exorcist. And if the problem persists, then maybe you get a doctor because the priest was cheaper and he'd be part of the family, right? And that's kind of flipped uh, lately. I mean, the last couple of centuries or three, (laughs) uh, they'll bring in the the doctor first, you know, treat whatever symptoms you have. And then if you, as you get closer to death, they'll bring in a priest. Right, right, right. Right, right. And I also feel like, you know, to have to to be a hospital with a priest on staff or like a a chaplain on staff or to be, you know, even just like, again, like a clinic. I've walked into clinics and I've sat in a waiting room and I just see nothing but like Bibles on the table in front of me and Bible verses in yarn stitched, you know, uh, decorative stuff. Mm -hmm. It doesn't offend me. Like as an atheist, it doesn't offend me. It just I've even concerns. seen these little cardboard stands with cards and and Bibles and and children's Bibles and stuff stuck in them. Yeah, you know, a, for me, a sales job on, on the impressionable children while they're there. Right. For me, it just I question the quality of care, and I can do an outsider test of faith for this. I think this would make sense to anybody, even if you're a diehard Christian. You're like, oh, you guys are just overreacting. If I took you to a dentist, and this is like one of the best dentists in the world, but he has like a voodoo doll on the table and he has like a tahiki model with like the the omen mask wooden uh bamboo cutouts and he comes out and he's got like you know the bone through his nose (laughs) right (laughs) and like a burning sense of incense in the other hand and he's a good dentist he's really good it's like hey get ready to get your uh your x-rays done he's like i'm not going to this dentist why not his x-ray machine is going to work just like anyone else's. You're, he's going to see the cavities just as clearly as anyone else. He's going to prescribe the pr- pr- procedure just like any other doctor. It's like Theoretically. He doesn't have the credibility because he's not messaging me that he's a, a man of science. Like he's not right. messaging me that he's grounded mm-hmm. in reality. He's has all right. these ideas of these supernatural things and weird iconographies. And as an atheist, I'm seeing the exact same thing when I see a Christian do the same thing too. It hurts my hurts my ability to believe that I'm getting adequate care from professionals when right. I see that. And so when I get COVID and I think in my head, man, I could go to a doctor right now, but I don't want to be prescribed or or directed towards some weird basis or have some weird commentary. I just want to be able to get the care that I need. And if the care that I need can just be easily received from a Google search, then I'll just do that compared to walking to a doctor and being like, oh, I don't know what you're going to prescribe me. I had people, I've had doctors prescribe me um, viral medication for just foot calluses because they think it was like a virus infection. And it totally wasn't. It was just because I was wearing shoes that are too tight. And I and oh, I even wow. mentioned that in the, in the meeting. It's like, don't you think my shoes are too tight? It's like, well, what size do you wear? I was like, I'm, I'm in 11s now, but I wore 13. It's like, why are you doing that? Because I can't find the shoe sizes I need. It's very hard to find size 13 until like I found out you can buy things online. This is like way back when. That's that's a telling story. Before, before you can <laughs> stuff on Amazon and have it shipped to your door. But like, I would be prescribed stuff. People are, even doctors are just people is the main thing I want to say. And I, I know this because I'm a doctor too, but the idea that just because you have the accreditation in a particular field of study doesn't mean that you aren't subject to the bias that you could have from your upbringing or your geopolitical location or belief system that you had in your household. And so what I would recommend is that people just recognize that you should go to credible doctors. And for those who can't separate how they message that to their their patients, you should and in my opinion, find a different doctor that has like at least a higher standard for how they package themselves or present themselves because you can believe in God and be a good doctor, but don't, don't like, don't like wear it everywhere and expect me to, to, to as a non-believer be convinced that whatever you're telling me is true. Cause that's only going to heighten my skepticism, yeah. my level of skepticism. Right. Right. What was that you were saying about this uh, artist uh, that was wearing this big, huge, diamond cross sure <laughs> excuse um, me no well, it's not just talking. doctors and professionals it's, it's musicians and everybody else who mis- you know they'll be like acting like such a bad boy on stage and then pull out a cross or something and and it's huge and it's diamond and it's it's everything against what Jesus would have wanted in the first place. I don't even know. I don't even know. So it's a great point. There's a concert series on the NPR's what YouTube channel called Tiny Desk. 
and they had a concert uh, by a jazz session artist called Hiromi, who's really great. I've loved her since I was a little kid. But the they have she has session drummers, so it's a different drummer every time that she does a concert. And the one that was playing this time started off the concert with just a black sweater, and then like mm-hmm. somewhere halfway through the video, a necklace comes out because he has to represent that hey i am playing drums with like an international cast but i'm a christian and i'm looking at this cross and it's this giant as palm palm sized cross just studded with diamonds and in my head i'm thinking how far has how far has christianity come that this is the acceptable format for uh how to be a christian or that i am a christian i remember there were direct verses in the bible saying when you pray don't do it in public or it's okay to do it privately because you don't necessarily want to show off your faith. But now it's like yeah. literally something that people wear around their neck. Yeah. Uh, it's just virtue signaling. Mm. Uh, they just want you to know that I'm a good person uh, and by, by, they think they can do it by, by bringing out something that re- refers to the religion. Um, what what gets me is, you know, if I were to wear my atheist hat, you know, it says, I don't care if you're an atheist, just don't put it in my face. Yes. Although they do it all the time. Right. Right. There's I can't no tell excuses. you. I had a friend of mine who, who I told you about before in a previous episode, I told him I was an atheist way back when, and mm-hmm. he was like, listen, I don't want to celebrate your atheist, your atheism, but I'm only going to ask you, don't be an atheist around my daughter. Like, it, I think that's fair. And I'm like, one, I don't know what that entails. <laughs> <laughs> don't be a scientist you. around my yeah, daughter like, I hate to tell it to you. i've been around your daughter like every like all the time and I, I it's not like i go out of my way to like to actively not believe god around her it's just it's just the state <laughs> of where i'm at and yeah, then too I'm, like we we celebrated easter together where we look for eggs in your backyard you think that's a christian holiday like i didn't yeah. say that in my head but like yeah. the well the weird compounding of history is yeah. just so bizarre. yeah i mean we we wouldn't proselytize the children and we would wish that they wouldn't proselytize to our children yeah although they don't seem to have that cap capacity to not do it uh, right. look at our schools the teachers in the schools pushing on their religious beliefs right. to the students uh, and what what gets me is they constantly demand that everybody respect their religion mm. and their religious beliefs, but they proselytize to everybody else, no matter what their religious beliefs are, not yeah. respecting their religious beliefs right. or non-beliefs. Right. I mean, you look at, so I hate to make this analogy, but like any mildew that you have in your home, as mm-hmm. long as it's mildew, it's like uh-huh. the survival mechanism of mildew is to attack different mildews, but don't attack the same kind of mildew. So like if you have black mold or like some sort of mildew, it'll be happy if it's around other black mold or the same kind of mildew from the same spore. But as soon as it encounters a different kind of mildew or foreign invader, it starts releasing toxins. It starts sporing. It like starts, there's like this weird microbiological warfare going on as soon as it interacts Mm. with a different thing. So like you think about how an idea spreads. It's my idea. Everyone can celebrate their idea as long as it's my idea. As soon (laughs) as I experience a different idea, I'm attacking that idea. But if everyone's Christian, then I'm fine. I I, I respect all forms of Christianity, or at huh. least the ones that are closely like mine. But any different yeah. things is the ones that I attack. But everyone to their face. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, and you know, you mentioned virtue signaling. I wonder, like, what virtues are actually being signaled when you have a diamond encrusted cross around your neck? Like, I just the, the you, signal that they're the Christian, and theoretically that they own morality. So, you know, if, if, you know, if you're wondering about this guy up on stage, who's like dressed in black and playing rock music or whatever, and he's worried that you might think he doesn't have any moral pulls out cross. I see I'm moral. Yeah. But this like virtual doesn't, signaling. doesn't that inherently like if I put on a shirt that said I did not rob a bank today, would that would that make you any way more inclined to make me believe that I didn't rob a bank that day? Or wouldn't you be like, huh, I prob- this guy probably robbed the bank today. Like, it, don't you understand like the direct <laughs> counter effect of doing something like that? Whenever I see like a giant. Well, I do as, as an atheist, I do. Yeah. But other Christians, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't think that they understand that concept. When you I know, see. Especially when it, when it concerns their religion. I hear what you're saying. I and I know we're getting closer to the 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 break, but I think this is an interesting thing that I'd love to come back to. But like, well, we still got ten minutes. Fantastic. Break. 
whenever you see, whenever I see a cross on someone's neck, I see a person that has a loose sense of ethics and a flimsy understanding of morality and is prone to choosing what they want to do, not based on the dogmatic viewpoints of their book, but just simply what feels good to them in the moment and justifying right. it retroactively. It's, it's a signal to me that this is a person that probably doesn't understand <laughs> the consequences of their actions in a public format or in a public space. And it makes me, if anything, more, more inclined to believe that they're not a moral person wearing it. And I know that that may not be the view of the person wearing the, the cross, but in my mind, that's just further, further proof of how out of touch they are because you can't, there's no symbol for where being a good person to the point that you would wear it around your neck. Like yeah. if it was that easy, honestly, don't you think everybody would have a sense of doing that? Or like there'd be a better recognized symbol. That's like more objectively true. Like you're yeah. a good person it's, based on it. Oh, go on. Ahead. Yeah. Well, anymore. Um, evangelicals, uh, Christianity has been the voice of Christianity in today's marketplace, mm. polit especially politically. And they've lost all credibility in my my sight. I mean, I grew up in a Christian home when my mother was a very moral, virtuous woman. And yeah. my dad, you know, he, he, he didn't practice religion that much, but he, he fought in World War II. Uh, you know, he, he was a deputy sheriff at home. He was a good man. But anymore, uh, these evangelical Christians supporting Trump and his ilk, and, mm. and breaking whatever law they want to to gain power and keep yeah. it is it, just lost all credibility in my mind. Yeah, it's my side. And yeah, it plus is. the the racism of mm. of that group, mm. um, the uh, what do you call it, the hypocrisy. Just it's just I don't look at Christianity the same way I did when I was growing up. For same those, for those reasons. Absolutely same. I'm saying that as a former Christian, like it to me when I was in. Christianity, it seems far more about, hey, here's a good bunch of people just coming together, trying to do the best they can and understand the world and and work together and be a community. But now I realize that it's almost the exact opposite of that. It's yeah. about this is a community that's about separating yourself from other people that could be good people, keeping yeah. you closed off from how the world works, keeping you closed off from how to be a good person, keeping you closed off from interacting with different kinds of people to understand that it's not just the community that you're in, but the global community that we're all participating in, and that this world that we're in is fragile in the sense of it's going to be around regardless of how much plastic and fumes and, and, and pollution we produce, but we may not be. So until we get our acts together, because this world wasn't created for us, we and we have to learn how to like take care of ourselves and the planet that we're living on at the same time, which takes right. some like ego checking on our part. We're going to have some bad times. We're literally going to give our children a worse planet to live in. Yes. I think these how are many, all. Go ahead. Go on. How, I, 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 you know, how many times have you heard people say that's not Christian when they're talking about MAGA and some other stuff about the things that they do? Mm -hmm. You know, that's not Christian. Mm -hmm. um, but if Christians are typically racist, bigots and persecute homosexuals and treat women as second-class citizens if they're against higher education and science if they're typically ignorant and superstitious mm. then that what chris that is what christianity actually is mm. we have to be honest and reassess <laughs> what christianity means it also i mean did you you know that kk the kkk is a christian organization oh, yeah, absolutely, right absolutely 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 yeah. Uh, I'd also say this too, with Christianity, there is a aspect of hero worship or leadership worship, which is essentially, hey, the more powerful my leader is, the more powerful I am because I'm on that leader's team, right? Uh -huh. And it's the same premise from choosing your God to choosing your prophet, to choosing your pastor, to choosing the, the deputy pastor of that. I mean, you are just in a pecking order where you're blindly following one person. So I can see how those who follow a very persuasive, very, you know, eloquent, very confident leaders that are following the same textbook example of leader. Uh, and and seem to want Bible, the same things that you do. That seem, but clearly don't like clearly right. don't. So like my, my whole thing would be like, you know, we, we, the leaders who are in that position of power, such great power typically lack the humanity to understand the plights 
of the people who or are the, at followed. least the compassion right or the compassion yeah. because they're just operating at such a different level than everybody else and they have access to they don't have the same concerns of like buying bread to uh, take care mm -hmm. of their family uh what right. rights do they have because they have power it doesn't really matter like i can get an abortion whenever i want to get an abortion but you we're gonna have to make a law to say that people like you can't get abortions i can pay any fine that i need to pay i get enough money that i can pay fines any day but for you when i make a 300 hundred dollar fine for you that could affect you that can get you homeless the next month so like there is a realm of a misunderstanding that we give to people that we we give to such power but it's the exact same problem that we would have for god why are we worshiping why are christians worshiping a god that has no concept of the human condition because even when he came as jesus he's turning water into wine he's walking on water he's curing the sick by touching them he's like he is literally using power that we don't have like you're not a human if you can do those things you're not a human if you don't have a man and a, uh like honestly if you don't have uh, a male and a female share their genes together and make a person like a virgin birth human being isn't a thing that humans do so like you can't just say hey i'm a human i'm just like you by the way i have all these extra powers and capabilities like right. no you're not playing our same rules and the most human thing of all is to die he can't yes. die I mean, yes. they say he died for your sins, but he was only gone for like three days and yeah, came that's back not even and a got week. to be God. No, you know? like that's yeah. like he he died and came back before the next week of uh, a weekly right. episode of Lost. Like, hey, yeah. hold on a second. And it wasn't even three long. days. It was Friday evening to Sunday morning. That's not Yeah, like days. you could lock me in a closet mm -hmm. and, like, and I can still walk out pretty good in three days. Like I yeah. wouldn't even die of thirst by then. Like yeah. what? that's not a yeah. long time, guys. <laughs> that's like Monday to yeah. Wednesday. <laughs> right. anyway. We need to go ahead and take our break now, I guess. Sure. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year and have nearly 1,100 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening at Knoxville's Old City, at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. That's Tuesday evening around 5.30. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. When you go out on the deck, turn left or at the far end. You can find us online also on Facebook, meetup.com, or at knoxvilleatheist.org. You can just Google Knoxville Atheist if you want to. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to the meetup and do a, a search for an atheist group in your town. If you don't find one, start, start one. Start one. That's right. One well, where do you want to pick up? Um, I wanted to talk about credibility, which is the theme for today's show. And what I meant by it is, you know, you can tell me something that's true. And it can be true, right? But if you yeah. package it in you in a banana suit, with with you doing a silly dance and there's like you know um stuff smeared across your face and you're ringing a bell and you got crystals sitting around like even I if you dressed up me like the, a witch doctor yeah <laughs> if you dress up like a witch doctor and you tell me what the weather will be like today and you're using the accuweather forecast and it's actually fairly accurate i'm still not going to take you seriously so like the question is is am i being too harsh with my assessment of saying listen you are you're triggering all my skeptical flags to the point where I'm asking, why am I even listening to you? If what you're saying is true, doesn't mean that it has to come from you. I can get a different source that can tell me something true that's more credible, right? And if that's the case, why do I put up with doctors mm. that present themselves as supernatural leaning? Or and and this is we live in a country where it's okay to be supernatural if you believe in a very specific do God and a very specific dogma. But I don't see why we even give them that leniency. I say if you are a dentist and you represent on yourself or in your clinic or in your practice, I'm a Christian and I love all these verses and I love this cross and I think these are accurate stories and I do think the world was flooded. It's like I don't want to be I don't want to be your patient. I have the right to be able to choose a different doctor that even if they believe the same thing can present themselves in a more credible fashion. Well, you uh, also have to assume that they believe in demons and, and angels and, and, you know, at least a few instances of talking animals, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. it, it reduces their credibility. 
Right. And I, I, I apply the same thing to my physical trainers. I explain the same thing, to, which I don't have, but like just friends of mine, I, I would say I, I apply the same thing to my groups of friends where if my friend believes in the supernatural, but he's, I know he's a good person. And just by virtue of me being an atheist around him and him and openly is a good effect on his, his worldview of like, Oh, maybe atheists aren't that bad. And I think that I can, that could be a healthy way for me to like learn to be a better person or raise family better. I see mm -hmm. that as like my role in, in a lot of times in being friends with a lot of people who are supernaturally inclined, but are still nice to me and cool with me and show me respect. Because otherwise, if they don't show me respect, I don't care what sort of in, indirect value I'm providing them by just presenting them with a good model of being a, a, a black atheist. Like I don't want to deal with anything that could be a potential threat to me. But if you show me respect, then let's be friends. But it doesn't, give me a credible understanding of, well, now I need to come to you because I need advice for like some sort of scientific issues. Like, no, because you're the friend that has the supernatural leanings. I can't come to you as a resource uh, of objective information because I can get objective information from sources that don't rely on supernatural. You don't know, you don't know how much of the information that he's giving you is influenced by a supernatural leanings. Yes. And it can even come down to just like, what's the meaning of this word? Like you could just have so much baggage based on how you're up. Like, what does it mean to what does the definition of sin mean? Like for me, sin used to be like when you're aiming an arrow and you miss. Did you know that sin is an archery term? Oh, no. Yeah. So get, believe it or not, Christianity borrows things from other things that were popular. Oh, at the no, time and, and, it ain't so. <laughs> <laughs> and just claims the word for their thing. So yeah. to sin is an archery term for like when you miss a target, right? It's like, oh, mm -hmm. you're trying to hit here, but you missed it here. And then it's become this whole conflated thing that they own. So like words that like Christianity wants to take over, like chariot, Lord, like Lord just used to be a job. Like that's a job that like a landowner would have. And you'd have people live on his land and they would refer to him as Lord. It would be the Lord. Yeah. Chariot, uh, uh, worship that wasn't a uh, Christian word. That was just a generic thing. But like these, these charged terms that infect how we think and what we think around, like the street, the sphere of what we think about makes even communicating with a Christian difficult when you want to have a more objective conversation about something. So like if I said, Hey, I'm worried that I'm, I have a bad thinking practice about this certain thing. I feel like I'd like to talk through this because I don't want to be prejudiced about something. Can I have this conversation with you? And you, and you bring up something out of like a point of vulnerability and they're like, well, you know, my worldview is blah, blah, blah. And morality is this. And it's like, Whoa, I wasn't talking about any of that. I just wanted to know about this. Like, well, I can't separate these two. It's like, I know that's why I shouldn't come to you when I need to have a more objective conversation, I need to find an atheist friend to talk to. I got to find Larry or I got to talk. Uh -huh. I got to find my friends that who have by virtue of talking to me have become atheists and have lost their dogma. And it's much easier for me to talk to them on a basis where we aren't necessarily always talking about religion again. I've had a friend. I just told a friend, Hey, listen, I'm learning a new language and it's really great. And it's like, yeah, that's almost like the tower of Babel when uh, they had oh, to like no. build, it's like, why are we talking about Bible stories, man? Why is literally everything about you a Bible story? Like, I can't have these conversations. It's so incredible because one, I don't even believe that what you're saying is true. But two, the fact that you can't have a conversation that lasts more than five minutes without bringing up some sort of Bible passage or story affects <clears throat> how I can take you seriously and what kind of things that I ever talk to you about. Yeah, so that's just the same another thing. way religion hijacks everything. The hijack yes. your, your sense of history. <laughs> I mean, you could be uh, a Scott so Irish true. and know absolutely nothing about the history of the Scott Irish or the Scottish or Irish, but you know the history of the Jewish people right down to the, the names of their children all the way down through the land. You, Christ, uh, religion has hijacked your sense of a heredity, um, yes. a sense of a family. Yes. Um, it priests makes you are think... called fathers and sisters. Yes. Uh, nuns are called sisters. You know, it's just one thing after another um and one of the first things they do when they when christianity entered a new land they would take over the holidays yes. the religious holidays of the yes. people who lived there and claimed them for their own which yes is how of course we got Chris, um, christmas and easter not only that but they erased the holiday the original holiday so like summer yeah. solstice winter solstice a lot of people mm -hmm. are like what is this holiday it's like it's the reason why you celebrate christmas it's the reason why we celebrate easter it's the reason why we celebrate all these right. All these holidays that we've renamed, right, used to right. already be holidays that people would celebrate. 
but we just, I mean, when the Christianity wing came in and just said, you know what, these holidays that are popular, we will own, relabel, and then they will belong to us. It's classic marketing. Like if I'm going to make a shoe, I'm just going to look at popular shoes that are on the market, make those shoes and change the Nike label to the Tyrone label. And I'm going to call them Tyrone Airs, you know, like instead of Nike right. Airs. Mm -hmm. Why am I going to rebuild the same thing? So um, you made a really great point. You said Christianity hijacks history. And I think in every aspect, that's absolutely true. I, I, I'm so shocked at the interpretation of Christianity at the times like it's 1700s, 1600s, 1800s. And what people assumed was Christianity is nothing like what we assume that it is today. And what it, uh, what it is, yeah. There's documents that have come out that were count that came out the same time that Columbus was, uh, uh, you know, sailing the seas and trying to figure out, you know, where America is and all that stuff. Like he was actually trying to look for India, but like a long story short, People at the time did not like the idea of a new continent existing. In fact, they were very much adamant that one, it either didn't exist or two, if it did exist, it wasn't holy because the Bible didn't say anything about there being a new continent. So like, why are you talking about the new world? The Bible doesn't say anything about a new world. Like this is not Christian yet. Same thing with Galileo exploring the stars. Like, why are you talking about other planets and stars? The Bible right. doesn't say anything mm -hmm. about that. That's yeah. unholy. Same thing with Charles Darwin and different animals. Like, why are you talking about other animals and a common ancestor? The Bible doesn't say anything about that. The Bible right. doesn't say anything about germs. Well, well, let's not forget it's not just the people talking about it. It's the church actively trying to suppress the science yes. and burning burning books and jailing scientists, yes. sometimes even, even killing them. Like um, Giordano Bruno was killed um, for espousing the, I think it was the solar system. Yeah, I mean, Socrates, only... Socrates, Socrates was poisoned in front of his own students because he right. just expressed doubt on on mm -hmm. things. And it's mm -hmm. like uh, Galileo was prisoned in his own home. Like right. Charles Darwin was laughed and ostracized out of his own uh, genre of science that he created. You know, mm -hmm. like, um, like because be back then being a biologist just meant you did whatever the church told you to say, right? And then for the first time, it's like actually there's a better. Yeah observation that i made that's not not necessarily what the church wants but i'm trying to make it what the church wants but i, I don't think it's going to fit and the church is like we don't like that you are everyone make yeah. fun of this guy he's a monkey now like that's so <laughs> crazy it's so yeah. crazy like the history that we see but even inadvertent explorers who find things right as clear cut as a brand new continent it's like i can't pretend that this or a new galaxies fit. You know back before stars were thought to be galaxies or yes. they didn't even know about other galaxies Right, right. But like mm -hmm. back then, the microscopes didn't, I mean, the telescopes didn't look that fancy. So like, you're just seeing blurry dots and you're like, hey, this blurry mm -hmm. dot's moving in a way that doesn't make sense if we we're the center of the universe, right? It's like, there's no real model. Like we'd have to be rotating around some other larger object, right? But but to find a plant, uh, a new continent and for having uh, religious scholars right at the time, this is unholy. We shouldn't be looking for other continents. There are no other continents because the Bible doesn't say anything like that. That's what Christianity was. And now today you go to any guy like in a Tennessee trucker hat or Kentucky, you know, uh, just like a proud Southern person. And they're like, yeah, God made this country. God has, God loves my family. God loves my truck. God loves my, uh, <laughs> my, my radio station. And you yeah. hear country music stars being like, God bless America. And I'm like, no, he didn't. <laughs> that's never, that's never happened in any like show me the verse where but god blesses america though we bless the whole world it's like yeah. yeah but we thought the world was like literally four towns back in yeah. <laughs> or you know some religion would just take that and change it like mormonism they, mm. they say that uh, jesus oh, yeah. came to america like 400 years after he died or 400 years ago something like that yeah 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 um and um uh, yeah why not who's right. gonna say it's wrong and prove it you know so what's the next step when we go out to Mars and we're just like, it's la we can laugh at the concept now, of, right now of saying like, oh, there'll never be a new verse or a new interpretation of Christianity that ex that expects us to believe that life on Mars would ever be a thing. But like you give us, you know, 300 years, 800 years, and maybe we do get successful enough where we get our act together on Earth and we are like colonizing other planets. And next thing you know, there's like another version of Christianity. It's like, oh, it's the solar system. No, it's like. It's the it's always the whole solar system because God created the universe day one. And that's 
all these or planets the that humanity lives on, which yeah. is why we live on the Venetian planets or volcanoes of, of Venus. And it's, this is all compatible with Christianity. Oh, sure. It's this almost is what Christianity inevitable. Is. Yeah. Why are we, why don't we just take a couple of steps back and just understand that the <laughs> level of credibility that comes with this book is poor by virtue of the fact that it rapidly evolves to wherever science takes us first and then retroactively adjusts itself so that it's just with whatever's popular at the time. So like when people are saying, hey, only monks can write, only your pastor should be able to read and explain to the audience. And then we came out with the printing press and now we can yeah. print Bibles. And we're like, oh, you know what? Everybody should have a Bible. Like we, everybody should read. <laughs> well, that was Protestantism. Every Catholic, yeah, yeah. Catholicism still doesn't want you to read it. That's so crazy. It's like, we'll make it yeah. in a language you can't understand. Oh, that's right. so crazy. But yeah, we'll tell you what it means. But Protestantism is an example of the evolution of Christianity. Like it is not the, yeah. it's not the single vine. It's not like one line that traces back no. to Jesus. No, like we have all these bifurcation Methodists at pop. have at least 10,000 different denominations. <laughs> I've heard a, a number as high as 30,000 different denominations of Christianity alone. Mm, right. Yeah. And so, so much for the truth. Right. And listen, I'll, I'll say this again. You look at the history of just Catholicism alone. It's enough to, to make you sick. Like the, the crusades were terrible. The, the Pope, the battling for popes is just so petty and violent and bloody. And it tends to be the case that whoever was a Pope at the time was not a good person. Oftentimes they were just, the best friend of the king at the time who right. was also a terrible person and you just have these yeah. really really and unfortunate a, relationships yeah that, so, and there have been times when there was multiple popes and they they literally fought each other with armies yeah yeah so what does it mean at the end of the day it just means that when i look at the system i don't see the credibility that justifies the level of confidence needed to believe in the message if the message itself is that extraordinary i always said like extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence like that's true i do believe that however it would also be good if it came from a credible source because if i think somewhere in that in extraordinary evidence is a credible from an incredible source like the asterisk would be also from a credible source and so if you're giving me extraordinary evidence but you're it's coming from like a talking crystal or burning bush or or uh, uh, English speaking snake. I'd be like, these are all weird things. I'd rather just have something that's a little bit more credible that I can question rather than these stories that you're giving me. I need a credible source of information. I'm not seeing one from Christianity. I'm not seeing one from the popes. I'm not seeing one from the bifurcations of the the how Christianity has changed. And clearly, just looking at the, how the times of how Christianity has changed, where it's like, no women. Okay, women are okay. No black people though. Oh, all right, black people are okay, but no slaves. Actually, slaves, we don't we're not saying slaves are a bad thing. We're just saying we don't read those chapters anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would just love to see uh, a more credible source of information that doesn't change based on what's popular. And what I get, the the best source that I have for that is science or right. at least the scientific method, because it will tell you things that are unpopular from the very get go day one. Like, here's something that you aren't going to like to hear. And then we just have to grow <laughs> around it because it's just a it's a thorny rock of truth and you're like man this sucks i'm gonna get sick i have to get vaccinated dang yeah. it i guess mm -hmm. that's just is what it is shots are unpleasant but it's what i need in order to survive and that's what science figured out and as a person who survived covid like i can just tell you right now like i'm so happy i did get vaccinated as many times as i did because i had a very low symptomatic experience yeah, they, they always tell you that it won't prevent you from getting it. It will keep you from dying from it. Yes. At least getting extremely ill. Like, yes. remember when COVID first hit? Oh, yeah. People were, I mean, it was, you got it and you pretty much guaranteed being on a ventilator. And and that was just a step toward death. Yeah, especially for it, it was very age. bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and I say this as a person who's lost my aunt. My aunt died from COVID. My my mom is a twin, and my and my I was able to convince my mom to get vaccinated, and my my mom's twin did not get vaccinated, and so we lost my aunt. But like I was able to keep my mom. I, and as unfortunate as it sounds, like I'm reminded of that viscerally almost every day. That like here are these two people, you know, uh, who at least phenotypically 
or and genotypically very right. similar to oh, each other. Nearly identical. Yeah. And I could have easily lost both if I couldn't have convinced at least one, you know, my mo- my own mother to to get mm-hmm. vaccinated. Like this is a how real did you thing. do that? Just out of curiosity. I, believe it or not, it was like a whole SE situation. I had to like literally ask my mom why she's choosing not to get vaccinated. What meth? And she's a Jehovah Witness. So like she has very strong viewpoints on like where she's at in the universe and what plans God has for her. And I had to, I can't, I couldn't completely break that down because that's not my goal for SC is not to break down a person's religion. It's just to like fact check the method that they're using to arrive to hopefully instill enough doubt that they recheck their own conclusions. And we had one specifically just on the vaccination. Of course, it went to religious grounds. But through the end of that, I did convince her that it's not it's not as blasphemous as it may seem to take a vaccine, right? Like if I, she's willing to like use deodorant, take a shower, take care of herself, maintain basic hygiene, sleep when she needs to sleep, she's already doing steps to take care of herself. And it's not like she's never had medicine before. The vaccine is just another form of medicine. So what method, why is she saying this form of medicine isn't holy? Like what method is she using to determine that? Turns out it's not a very reliable method. She then got convinced to take a vaccination. She has been vaccinated. And I think that literally saved her life. Like, I'm honestly. Well, like, I, I, I think it did. I think it pretty much did save her life. Um, kudos on you. Thanks. Uh, I, was, I was just wondering if you got to the point where just do it for me. Just, <laughs> just do it for me. <laughs> you know, like, I, I wish like an argument like that would work, but like that's sort of like the the level of toxicity of religion because i can't just i can't use that argument for her she's going to believe it because she wants to believe it right yeah and yeah. i wish i can go up to any christian and just be like do it for me just like leave this behind man like you'd have a much better life as soon as you have more time to come to terms with death and like understand that it's going to happen but it's okay because it gives your life now meaning and, and, and your death is not a change of address it's it's a final step but you can, it provides so much closure for all the stuff that you're dealing with now. And like, take this opportunity to live the life that you can. It's not giving up hope. It's in fact, giving you an opportunity to like recognize really beautiful things about the world. Anyway, you said listener questions. We do got listener questions. Uh, Larry, give me a spiel for like, uh, summarize our talking points and then I'll bring up some comments for the show. Summarize (laughs) our talking points? Yes, be a host. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we are atheists. So we uh, <laughs> we don't like uh, what's being said about atheists in the in the marketplace of ideas. You know, and usually by those who are believers and and uh, le- leaders in the believer community. So we have this show to show that how atheists think, how we come to our conclusions, why we think religious beliefs are 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 bad or false or harmless. Uh, harmful, sorry, harmful, and how religion does great harm in the world today. And we hope you listen to us every week. And uh, please feel free to send us any comments or questions at um, askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. Nice. So YouTube is being silly and it asked me to verify my my account information so i have comments from listeners from the last three weeks Mm -hmm. but i don't have access to them because google's asking for confirmation and it's not sending me the notification okay well i've got a i've got a comment from a one of my digital free thought people what are atheist beliefs what are atheists what do they what do we believe i mean what do we believe we don't necessarily believe in well as far as what atheist is, it's not a system of belief. It's just a state of a lack of belief. Yeah. And I think that's the main distinction. It's it's not a um, it's not it's a not what we believe in. It's what we don't believe. Yeah, it's not an eanity. It's not Excuse like me. it's a whole set of beliefs. It's just the state of not believing. In my opinion, it's when you're born, you don't have a belief in a god. You are instilled with a belief of god, typically by your parents, who similarly were instilled with the belief of God by their parents, right? So like Mm -hmm. when you are born, you, in my opinion, are an atheist. And it only tends to be the case that people become religious based on their environment. And when you recognize that's the case, it's not so much a question of how did you become an atheist? It's more of like, how did you become religious? And if you didn't do so in a manner that is a reliable way to always come out with the right and true religion, if that even does exist, then 
why not just go back to your default state, which is, oh, I don't believe any of these things until I have good reason to believe it. Not only that, but if you go to any person who is religious, you'll quickly ask a question, a basic question, which is, do you believe in any of these other gods? And right. they will say, no, I don't have any belief in it, though they do go an extra step and say, I actively don't believe that that God even exists, which isn't as far as you have to go for an atheist. It's just a lack of belief that takes you, that gets you to the party. But the idea that uh, atheists, if there was a hundred gods, an atheist only believes in one less God than most monotheists, including Christianity. Uh, yeah. It's not that yeah. big of a difference, but yet it no. has such a big impact on our society, that one difference. So like, honestly, we're not much different we have a lot more in common with Christians than we think. What we'd prefer is just that that one minor difference of that one extra God does impact our lives. I, I, I really don't even have that much trouble with it. Um, I mean, let's say you I have a friend who's a deist. You, you know him as well as I do. Uh, <laughs> and that's not a problem for me because his deism doesn't uh, profess any particular beliefs about the world it doesn't have a book that tells you how you need to live who you need to hate who you need to fight um it's you know the a belief in a generic god like deism like a god created the universe and he either went away or died or, or just lost interest in it mm. is not really a problem it's mm. religion it's it's people saying that they know what god wants you to do and what god want, doesn't want you to do yes that's the problem Mm. And most Christians become Christians the same way children become Santaists. <laughs> you know, their exactly. parents. No, it's very true. So well said. From the from the very earliest uh, conversations that they have with them, they they instill this this God, and of course, Santa is a kind of a stepping stone to it. But um, you know, it's just it's it's better not to lie to your children. Yes. Yeah, because then that becomes a hurdle that they have to overcome. And right. I know we've had parents on the show say, I'm afraid to let my kid know that Santa Claus isn't a thing because mm -hmm. then they could go to school and say, hey, I don't I don't believe in Santa Claus anymore. And then the parents would get angry at them. But like mm -hmm. my opinion would be, I think the problem occurs when you start telling your kid that Jesus is or Santa is a thing, not so much when they realize it isn't a thing and you have to tell them it's not a thing. It's when you keep encouraging that it is actually mm -hmm. Uh, a real person well, that goes into your it, home. It gets right back to our, our topic for today, credibility. Yes. You're telling your, your, your children things that aren't true and telling them to believe it. And then later on, you're going to say, no, I was just kidding. Oh, right. No, I, that, that's not true. Right. Yeah, but for years, you said it was true. Now yeah. they have a problem. Now they have these questions going on. And hopefully mm. they ask them from their own parents, but don't, I hope that if anything, if anything, the silver lining of a situation like that is, it can help the kid learn to not, not trust even their parents to 100% certainty. And if their parents are also Christian or also atheists, at least they have the level of skeptical to be like, hey, I'm not going to trust anybody to 100% certainty because even my own mom or dad who loved me more than anyone else can lie to me. We got time for one listener comment or a couple? Sure. Go. All right. So uh, we did a show called The Meeting of the Minds a while back where we mm -hmm. did the uh, uh, famous luminaries, including Jesus. Uh, and uh, some of the comments of the show was that we could have asked Jesus better questions uh, to, 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 to further uh, confound our points with how upset we are with um, his actions and past. And so Anonymous asks, uh, tells us, the first thing you should have done when Jesus was on the show was show him the Bible, especially the New Testament, and ask him what he thinks about it. Bet he would become an atheist. Also bet he would say he never said any of that. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Might be worth another whole show. Yeah, we should have like, had, if you have Jesus on the on a call or on a show, just literally hand in the Bible, flip to the New Testament, and be like, read this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did Starting... this happen? Starting with his little group in the Garden of Gethsemane when they're all arrested and go have him read from there on. Yeah, my thing <laughs> would no, be yeah, go start ahead. from Matthew. And if he says, yeah, that happens, then flip to Luke and be like, why is it different in this version? It's like, oh, mm -hmm. Luke's crazy. He's always mm -hmm. adding extra stuff in. And then flip to John. He's like, oh, my gosh, don't go to John. I don't believe I, I we had a special relationship. Yeah. I, don't know how I, this I, I particularly like the last few verses in Matthew where uh, when Jesus was resurrected, all the all the graves, not just his, 
all the graves opened up and they the what did they call them uh, well the people who slept there came out and went into the city and was seen by many wow uh, so we we're talking zombie apocalypse right there but nobody sure. seems to mention that uh, sure historians or in otherwise and I, I it just brings me back to the idea of has anyone ever embellished a story when you know that no one else has seen it like have you ever caught a fish and like told your friends hey Every single time I tell this story, the fish gets a little <laughs> bigger. Yeah. Or like, hey, I when I used to skateboard, I used to jump only this high. But when you're you're when you're adult, you're you're still doing the same body motion. You're like, oh, it's this high. And as you get your arms get bigger, you're like, oh, this is how big I jump. That's four hundred years of the telephone game. It is. Imagine, yeah. imagine if it was actually in people's best interest to embellish your stories for their profit and power. Right? Imagine what right. kind of things would happen as a result. Um, another comment from the meeting of the minds idea. I find it most amusing and worrying that anyone can claim to know the mind of anybody else. And in this case of people who lives long ago or are already dead or aren't present, or we don't even have sufficient evidence that they did exist or exist even, at all. Even isn't that, that yeah. isn't that just another form of woo? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. It is, but yeah. it's also knowingly fictional. Like we're not selling it as like a religion and that should be the point of, if you can, if you can frame something as a performance, or as like as a work of fiction, and use it as a model to like learn some funny things, right? right? That should be, in my opinion, how we should even approach religion. Like we should, we should understand that religion is just mythologies presented by people who are trying to do the best with what information they had back in the time, and maybe we can learn from some social characteristics of how they govern themselves and how they saw the rest of the world. But we should never ever take it as a literal truth because. We have laws, we have ethics, we have better ways of treating each other now that we know we're different and we can interact with each other still than we do with this book where everybody was assumed to be the creation of this one superior supernatural God that we've never seen or talked to since. You right, know? right. Well, we come right down to the wire. Any Ooh. final thoughts? Uh, take care of yourself. Wash your hands. If you're sick, stay home. Don't go to work. And don't take your good health for granted. It's an incredible thing to be able to breathe and feel have like you have energy and not be in pain. And Larry, I do know that you're uh, somewhat injured right now. Uh, I hope a speedy recovery for you as well. And for yeah, all knees. my knees, take care of yourself. Yeah, my knees. Yeah, I uh, I did a lot of karate and dancing and stuff, which I don't regret at all. So I'm happy nice. to have done it, but it kind of wore out my knees. Anyway. My content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles of the subject. You can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. And remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio here in Knoxville. Say bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.